Hello guys and welcome to this week's um, learning RPA learning topic on ProRPA.com. Uh, this week we'll be talking about uh, the, the blog article has been like you know uh, a lot on the theoretical side which is you know the most recommended practices based on my experiences so far to make your bot more reliable, scalable, robust, you know uh, capable, a good solution, something that, you know, uh, corporates could actually rely upon. So, uh, we have discussed like five uh, points thoroughly. So, uh, if you haven't checked them out, please do so. They can come really handy and um, can actually make a difference, like, you know, uh, from being good to being awesome, being, you know, superb. So, um, I would really, really uh, recommend that you guys check that out and, uh, and follow those methodologies that have been proposed so that, you know, you can always build a good solution. Okay, um, now we'll also be talking about um, invoke workflow activity as I've discussed like at a very minimal level uh, on the blog article itself what uh, invoke workflow activity does. Um, in here today, we'll be uh, giving you a demo on how to use this Invoke Workflow activity more, more or less like a quick example and also like some of the benefit realization of having this Invoke Workflow activity, right? So first, I'm going to show you a very simple program. And what this program is going to do is uh, it's going to open the SAP application which is installed on my system it's gonna, and I have some configured settings to connect to um, to some server, right, which is specific to my firm. And um, we'll be entering some login ID and password, some, something which actually doesn't work. I have put in like wrong ID and password here. But uh, just to showcase that, you know, the RPA bot can actually interact with the SAP application. How does it do that? And, and uh, you know, uh, and probably some subsequent processes that we can implement. So we'll be opening the SAP application, choosing the process, the configured process, and then we'll be logging in, right? So let me show you how it works in normal scenario. So I'm going to run this now. Um, okay. The bot has started and it's automatically starting the SAP application. Got to the initial screen. It's going to look for the particular process, the configured, you know, the name of the server that I'm going to access. You can see on the top right corner is where it's going to write this EY, blah, 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 ECC. It also maximized the screen, went to this demo box server, got to the login screen, and uh, it's, it's going to wait, you know, because uh, it has to make sure that certain elements exist on the window, and then here's the user ID and the password that it entered. Right. So um, as you can see that, you know, the process worked fine. I didn't enter uh, like the credentials because I don't want to log into the system. Right. And, and it's an office system as well. So um, I have to be you know, cautious of that fact. But um, like all the three like sub processes within this within this program, within this workflow, which is the opening of the SAP application choosing the configured setting and logging in. All three of those have been in in the same, like the main program itself, right? And if you have gone through those recommended practices of mine, um, I have recommended that, you know, we should have a modular approach. So uh, to accomplish this modular approach, which means to crack down a big, big process into simpler, smaller processes, uh, we use Invoke Workflow. So what Invoke Workflow does is instead of uh, a complete set of activities within a sequence, it's going to put that in another page, like besides this main page. And um, what it will also do is it will uh, put a function in that main page. And that function will be referencing to the child page and the operations which are listed on that sub page would be executed. Right, so uh, we're going to show you how to do that. 
let's um, imagine that you know we want the login uh, sequence to go to another page and we want a function that will uh, refer to these login activities whatever is provided inside let me actually give it a first a quick look so it see it's seeing whether the image exists or not and then it's typing with the user id and the password and um, i have commented out the like enter and if you remember, it's always a good approach to use keyboard strokes, keystrokes, rather than, you know, um, clicking on um, the submit buttons or OK buttons, because, you know, there's a possibility that, you know, your bot might not be able to, based on the selectors, might not be able to identify the UI element correctly, while keyboard strokes, like the chances of them working properly is, is slightly better, right? So we have discussed this uh, before, so I'm not going to delve deep into these topics. But um, if you want to put this login sequence into another page, simply right click and choose extract as workflow. So as you can see, you're asking whether, um, you know, like what is what's going to be the new name for the diagram that you want to create based on these activities that you have provided or selected. So let's say open and login. I'm just giving, or, or probably attach and login, right? Create. That's it. You can see the new page is created, attach and login, and uh, there's an invoke workflow activity that has been added, which upon clicking, you can see that it's referencing to the attach and login, uh, you know, uh, the workflow, which is a separate workflow. Another good point, another good thing is uh, at the directory level, I'm going to show you once you do control O, right? Um, this is the exercise one where I'm working right now, all the programs that I'm working and we have the main page and we have the attach and login. So at the directory level, uh, when you're looking in at like, you know, the Windows Explorer, you can see that both the programs, the parent program and the child program, the workflow actually exists at the same directory location so they're at the same level this way it becomes easier to refer them to as well right and uh, you don't have to open anything so that way if you run the program it will work exactly the same way as any other program or like the program how it was before we used the invoke workflow right so this way you can imagine that you know um, instead of like let's say having another process or something like that right you have completely separated out the login process and this login process can be used by multiple bots now right instead of having it or copying it again and again in in different uh, workflows you can simply pass a reference to it and you're all set so you got a module or a working solution for to log in using the credentials, right? So I hope that made sense. It's pretty easy and uh, easy to, um, you know, uh, execute as well and can actually save a lot of your work. And it's a, it's, it's a very, very highly recommended practice. So please do use Invoke Workflow and make your program as small and comprehensible to other users as possible. Okay, now the like another feature which we have in Invoke Workflow is the use of arguments. So we can pass data values among different workflows and um, and can use them in you know at, at the child side. Usually that's the case. So um, how is that gonna be useful? I mean. The data flow can happen both ways, but um, let's let's say uh, you have a main process, right? And um, you want to send because you have um, you have used Invoke Workflow to log into the SAP application, and uh, what you want is to provide your specific user credentials, right? You don't want everybody in your company to have the admin rights. So what you may want is instead of uh, you know using the login id and the password which i have given as pro rpa and password as password 
you may want to pass the values for the login ID and the password fields using the arguments and that way those specific user credentials would be used to log into the system. That's a perfect example for data security, right? So for this, you go to import arguments and uh, you create first uh, argument, let's say as, uh, give it any name, admin, right? It's an input and uh, the value is gonna be pro RPM. I'm just giving the same values, right? And then let's also use password and the value for that is password, right? Okay. And uh, you have input those arguments here. You wanna save it as well. I just did a control S. Then you go to attach and in here, you simply use admin and password. Actually, you have used that. Then you go to arguments. And within this argument panel, we have to simply add two arguments with the same name, admin and password. So just declared these arguments in here and we have used them in the user ID and the password field. And the values to these arguments are provided from the main page, which is pro RPA and the password for our password, right? So now you can imagine that, you know, uh, you are able to transfer the data from one, from one workflow to another. And at the same time, you can, you know, implement these security measures, data integrity and security and reliability and, and, and all that stuff can be, you know, we, we can talk about it as much as you want. But uh, the high order bit is that uh, it provides a very reliable and comprehensible way for you to manage your programs effectively. Correct. So I went to the main program again. I'm going to save it and let's run this to see if it works perfectly or not. So it's uh, opening the SAP application and you can imagine that, you know, uh, the only way for us to check is to check the user ID field because the password is going to be, you know, just the dots displayed in front of us. So if it's able to enter the user ID as pro RPA, that means the data transfer from one page to another of the workflow uh, has happened successfully. So we are into the SAP application. We are in the login screen as well. And uh, let's see, the user is pro RPA. Yes, that is correct. So as you saw, we were able to transfer the data correctly. And uh, this can come really, really handy for you guys. Trust me, because, you know, it's all about the mindset. In many cases, if you have a full fledged, you know, complex robot in front of you, and in case it's erroring out, then debugging it would, you know, look hard on you with you you'll have to probably put up some extra effort to focus to dedicate your efforts onto one particular part of a complex program versus if you have a separate workflow for it then it becomes much easier and the task looks like conquerable to you right that's how you'll be your mindset will be so um use in work workflow activities as much as possible i think we have discussed that at a very legible point where you know we have discussed the different activities and how complex programs are made and using in full workflow uh, activity in the end seems like a logical choice so that's why we kept it up till now but um, let us know if you have any questions or comments or feedback we have a youtube channel waiting for your subscription so please do that as well and uh, the blog articles too and if you have the uh, you know, if you like it, then please, please do share it with among your friends, your colleagues, your family members and provide your likes as well. These are like really motivating words that helps us keep moving along. OK, and uh, for thorough learning of RPA, please do check out my ebook series called CRISPR Learning for UiPath or for Blue Prism and the video tutorials on Udemy and Skillshare with the same name called CRISPR Learning. So please do check them out as well and happy automating. Goodbye.